take a chance to close it. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us this morning. Um, we are going to be learning about e-commerce, how a business can um, transfer, transfer over to the e-commerce side, how to build an e-commerce site, get some of your questions answered. This is obviously not uh, a lengthy detailed program, but um, if you don't know who BACD is, if you're in business, we encourage you to reach out, check out their website. Um, there's lots of opportunities, learning opportunities in addition to e-commerce. So I will leave Teresa to introduce herself um, and we hope you enjoy the session. Thank you, Andrea. You're welcome. So welcome everybody, Teresa Shaver from the Business Advisory Center Durham. Um, I have been with the BACD for eight years now. And before that, I actually worked at the Whitby Chamber of Commerce as a membership and events manager. And then before that, I worked in the staffing industry. In fact, I moved to Canada almost 20 years ago to start a startup. Um, and before that, I was involved in a, a couple of different startups and different entrepreneurial journeys. But it's safe to say that I've spent a lot of time in business and in corporate business as well and operations and I've uh, been able to transfer those skills to the Business Advisory Center Durham. We are a not-for-profit organization that helps people to grow and start successful businesses. So it's for people that are starting a business, but it's also for businesses that want to grow and go to the next level. And there's many different services we provide. And I think that's one of the hardest things for us to articulate and to share is what are the things that we can actually do to help businesses. So I'll go through some of that with you. And then today's presentation is really about dipping your toe into e-commerce um, and to also just talk, talk about the state of e-commerce as it is now. So thank you for being here with me. If you have any questions at all, please put them in the chat box. And if I can help and answer those questions or direct you or you know, just be a support to you, that's what we do. Um, so I'm just gonna move over to my next slide. It's, we like to think that we guide businesses from the idea stage all the way to when they are successful. So we are a advisory, consultancy, uh, coaching and program organization. So we are funded by the region of Durham and also the Ministry of Economic Development to help businesses with this. Because if you can make money, then you can spend money. And when you spend money, you spend it at local businesses and you support the local economy. And also working with us helps to lower the statistics of businesses failing. And so when we can be there to help you and support you along the way and help you with learning and skills transferring and training for your business, then your business can do well. And so that's the point of our kinds of organizations. Um, there's 54 of us in Ontario. I happen to be the one that looks after Durham Region. And I have a team of four, uh, four staff members with me. Um, and we, uh, the advisors themselves, have also been uh, in business for themselves. So uh, we're very passionate about helping our businesses and helping them really be the best that they can be in their business. So thanks for being here today. These are some of our offerings that we have. Definitely uh, a big part of our business is the one-on-one -on -one advisory meetings. We probably have about 1,200 to 1,500 of those a year. Uh, we run uh, workshops, events, networking events, anything around getting your business started and growing. The fundamentals are more for like one-on-one, but then we also have other programs like we have a, a coaching program, um, we have up sales, we have the Starter Company Plus program, which is a funded grant program of up to $5,000. And uh, we work alongside the Ajax Board of Trade and other organizations in the Durham region to really help support their businesses. So we have clients who come up to us that are just getting started. We have clients that have been in business for eight or 10 years and we're helping them rethink their branding, helping them figure out um, how to automate some of their business processes, how to you know, um, think about growing their business and and leveraging different networks and things like that. So we have a lot of opportunity from, from that perspective. So just getting into e-commerce, um, what is it? Well, obviously it is, um, it refers to the buying and selling of goods or services using the internet and that the transfer of money and data um, is necessary to execute those transactions. So you know that Shopify, if I don't know if everybody knows Shopify, but it is the number one e-commerce platform in uh, North America, maybe even in the world. And it is a Canadian company. 
And uh, since COVID happened, uh, their shares have actually shot through the roof. Now, Shopify is probably not necessary for, the, what, for people that are just getting started in it. It is for a bit more of a mature business. And I will talk to the other ones that we have as well. And please, if you have questions, put them in the chat box. And if I can find the chat box, because it's disappeared right now, um, I'll answer those questions as I go. As you can see, what happens is that the slides don't go forward when the chat box is on, which is a weird thing. So what is e-commerce? So there's a whole bunch of different kinds of e-commerce depending on the kind of business you're in. So most of us are very familiar with business to consumer e-commerce because we're the consumers buying from businesses. So I've just listed two businesses, but if you've done any shopping online, it's more than likely gonna be business to consumer and Amazon would fall into that. There's also business to business consumer, sorry, uh, e-commerce as well. So, you know, businesses buying from each other and then there's consumer to consumer. Uh, e-commerce, which we don't often think about. And I've only put Facebook Marketplace and Kijiji, but there's Barrage Sale, there's eBay, there's um, a whole bunch of different consumer to consumer marketplaces where you can buy and sell products, right? So e-commerce, again, just doing business online. So also e-commerce, and we don't always think that it's these things, but it is online shopping, it's subscriptions, it's deals, it's coupons, it's on-demand services like Uber or Skip the Dish, it's, it's hotel bookings, travel bookings, it's so many things that just happen online. So many of us think that we're not in e-commerce or even using it, but really it's so many of us are already using it. And when you think of e-commerce, it's not just that e-commerce we talked about, it's also marketplaces. So when you start thinking about your business and dipping your toe into e-commerce, it doesn't mean that you ne necessarily have to set up a really robust website. Maybe it means that you're gonna sell on Etsy, you can sell on Facebook, Instagram, you can sell on Amazon if you wanted to, there's Google Shopping. In fact, Google Shopping is free right now to list your products, there's eBay, there's Alibaba, if you guys know of any, please add them to the chat box because I think that would be valuable to share with everybody um, what the different marketplaces are. So when you think of yourself as a business, um, selling products and services, there's actually a lot of places that you can list those. Um, and you know, uh, you can sell digital products as well. Like lots of people do sell digital products. So why is it important? Well, well this is the hard part with my uh, screen, so I apologize everybody. It's important because of the situation we're in now. In order for businesses to survive, they need a way to be able to still reach their customers. And so the increase for, has there's been an increase in demand and I'll show you the next slide which actually talks to that. And many more and more businesses are having to move from a bricks and mortar business to an e-store. Um, online stores are open 24 seven, you know, and uh, it really helps because people can then go online at a time that's convenient for the customer. And I think you guys as consumers yourself know that we are in the age of the consumer, right? It's not in the age of the businesses anymore where the businesses can really dictate when they're open and what they offer and how hard it is to reach their services. We're in the age of the consumer having all the power. And so when we think of that as a business owner, we want to think about what's the experience we're creating for our customers. How do we make it um, uh, accessible? You know, uh, this is very important and we'll, we'll talk through some of those for sure. Um, eMarketer is a really good platform if you want to find out information. They certainly predict that retail e-commerce sales will be more than $75 billion this year. In fact, Online sales right now accounts for about 25% of total retail sales. And I'd love to see that statistic after we start to reopen up the economy, whether how that changes, because I think there will be a significant change there. Um, you know, we've been pushed into this kicking and screaming. Um, we've tried to tell our businesses for a long time that if you're opening a bricks and mortar business or a retail business, please open an online store at the same time. Make it so that your customers are able to buy from you online and reduce the friction of the customer getting hold of you, right? And you guys have probably run into friction somewhere when you're trying to buy something. I know in the last few weeks I have for sure been trying to order some things that I really need haven't been able to so um, find a way of reducing that for your customer right so when you look at this slide um, this is the statistics of the top 
10 e-commerce sites in Canada by monthly traffic. Probably no surprise, uh, Amazon's right at the top. And then when we look at the bottom, the rest is where everybody else is. And this would be, again, this is from similar web, and this was taken in April, 2020. So this will be interesting to see where this is at in about three months. Um, but, um, you know, you can see on the very right that it was all heading up. And I think that's really where we want to start figuring it out for our own businesses. And when you look at November and December, you can see as predicted, December is always one of the busiest times for retailers. And then January, February hits, and then March, it starts to go up, right? And you can see who these businesses are. This is Amazon right at the top. There's eBay. Um, eBay is pretty steady. I actually am not one who shops on eBay. Um, Etsy is really good for handmade businesses and, and um, you'll be surprised at actually who puts their products on eBay. So, uh, sorry, on Etsy. So go and have a look at the Etsy marketplace. Home Depot, Walmart, Costco, um, Canadian Tire actually has a very, very popular and very, um, very good online and being able to pivot very well online. Hudson's Bay, unfortunately, you can see is trending down. Best Buy, I don't know if you noticed, Best Buy even is almost rivaling Amazon in some of the services and products that they have. So the benefits of e-commerce, and we mentioned this earlier, is that it's available 24-7. Uh, uh, it's easy for your customers to access. So you can have international reach. I'll let you know that since we put our events on virtually, we have customers attending from all over the world. Uh, mostly in our time zone, so North America, but also Europe. Um, what's good for you is that you can, you have statistics of what your customers are doing. Um, you have great data actually from your online e-portal where customers walking in and out of your store, it's not easy to get that kind of data. There's also a lot of costs that are much less because you're not in a physical store. So there are certainly benefits to e-commerce as well. So this is just, if you can see at the top, from March 11th to March 29th. And this was this, the volume of sales and search for these kinds of products since we've been in quarantine. So furniture, home decor, 84%. Food and restaurants, 194%. I'd love to know from you a little bit about what you've been doing with your sales. I'm just going to open the chat box so that I have it there. Thank you. How have your habits changed since you've been at home? How have your habits changed with buying products? I'd love to have some discussion around that from you guys. And we mentioned, yes. Or you can feel free to open your mic as well if you just want to, I think, just say something. I, I would like to add that actually I've been saving a lot of money. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but what I found was uh, when I went to set up the online accounts for food and uh, anything else I wanted, the delay, um, because so many people went online, I, I just went probably more than I would normally do went to the brick and mortar stores. Right. Uh, just because of the delay, uh, you know. If I need butter or milk, I need butter or milk. I can't wait two weeks or three weeks or a month in some cases. So. Yes, I, I think for everybody, shopping has become quite the challenge. It's opening up now. Um, I don't know. I actually don't do the shopping. My husband goes, but I don't know if the stores actually still even have everything fully stocked. You know, I imagine so. But I don't know how the supply chains are being disrupted right now. Right. right. So interestingly. You're right, it is difficult from that perspective. So we also know um, the benefit of e-commerce is the speed of access, right? Online shopping, you avoid crowds and busy stores and um, it's easy for you to find project products. You just have to uh, search online. You can even search using Alexa or Google. So it just makes it really so easy to do. I know for me, myself, that I've started doing so much of my search using voice. And so if you think about your business, um, what does voice search do for you in your search rankings? Um, people get very specific with what they're looking for. They're not just going to say dentist Whitby. They're going to say, you know, or dentist Ajax. They're going to say Ajax, Salem, and Taunton. You know, it's going to be very much more specific. So 
of course, that makes a difference in the kind of content you put in your website because it needs to be specific to what your customers would search for. Um, again, we mentioned international reach. That makes sense. I mean, barring the whole international shipping point, you know, uh, complexities, um, customers can buy from anywhere. And I know for Canadians, uh, the U.S. market is a big market. So a lot of our clients that are already working online, their customers, quite frankly, are mostly from the U.S. It is a big market. There's 360 million people where we are only 36 million. So a, a big difference in the market. And so this is a great opportunity for your business to actually go beyond the borders of where you are. As a retail store or a bricks and mortar business, you're confined by the area that you're in. But as an international online store, you can really reach anybody, which I think is a, a great opportunity for your business. Um, I've actually been interviewing a bunch of businesses around how they've been able to pivot during this time. And it's very interesting, the opportunities that they've been able to create for themselves by moving into a, a place where they can only do business virtually. So definitely something to think about. And uh, uh, I was actually meeting with one this morning and uh, you know, she had a great message. She said, you know what, try it now, take the risk. Like you're in a situation here where you're in like the worst situation you can be from, from a business perspective and maybe even from a life perspective. So take the risk, you know, you have really nothing to lose at this point. And I mentioned as well, so the, there's a lot of um, tracking statistics that you can get either from Google Analytics or any of the software that you would use. So if you were going to use Shopify or Wix or WooCommerce or um, Squarespace, uh, you, or even the point of sale machinery that you would use is that um, they would have very detailed analytics for you on products and um, how your customers shop and which pages they visit. Um, and you could see what your customers look at. You can see that they abandon a basket and why, and maybe it's the, you know, pricing and that kind of thing. They are, you know, this is probably beyond today's scope, but they are definitely um, things that you can do for your customers to make them buy from you, just like uh, Ikea walks you through the store, right? Um, Andra asks, what do you believe are the top reasons for e-commerce businesses failing? Well, I think, again, it goes to the point that businesses probably don't know who their customers are or haven't targeted who their customers are. And so they've built something that people are not buying. And I think that would be a reason for failing. Um, I mean, the, the World Wide Web is a huge marketplace, right? And so when you start out with your business today, you probably want to carve out some sort of market for yourself, starting locally and then moving into groups, either on Facebook, um, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, you can certainly start to grow your business just that way. And yes, we don't have physical things like rent and inventory and warehouse costs and cashiers and all that kind of thing. Um, but we have different kinds of costs, right? So we would have someone who needs to edit and someone who needs to be able to add images and create product photography and um, you know proper keywording and description. So, I mean, that's a really big business as well, right? Is being able to build it so that the store, um, so that people can actually almost, if they cannot feel, they can feel the experience of what it is so they can step into it virtually. So when you are starting with your e-commerce store, I think the very first thing you need to do is search for a domain. Um, this is similar to, you know, your website. Um, sometimes if you already have a website, depending on what that website is, you would be able to open a, a e-commerce platform right on it. So I give you an example. If you're already on WordPress, it would be easy for you to open a store on WordPress using WooCommerce. If you're on Shopify, well, that's what Shopify is. It is an online store. Wix, if your website's on Wix, again, you can open up a page on your website that has your programs or your services or your products. Um, and so the domain is really the brand of your website. And so we'll talk through some of the e-commerce platforms as well. So, and if you have any questions on that, you're welcome to ask me as well. A lot of what we do at BACD is help customers really make these decisions and decide which platforms work best for them. And then also help them through the content of their website. So when we look at um, you as a business and we start thinking about um, wanting to go online, there's some things that you need to look at first is really understanding what online sales, what is the state of it for your industry? You know, what are their best practices? Um, what are your competitors doing? 
But one of the best ways to actually learn about what's happening in your market is looking what your competitors are doing. And when you type in, you know, search as well into Google, you can see like 10 or, 10 or 7 different search results of what people actually type in. And then also really find out from your customers, what do they want? Um, one of the clients I was interviewing, uh, we got to this question because she realized that her customers certainly wanted single serving foods. And so this is what she went back to. She used to do a lot of large catering, which unfortunately has fallen by the wayside, but she hasn't lost her customers who still want those single servings. So when you look at the industry that you're in, what was the past sales trends? What do you think future sales predictions are? You can look up Google Trends and look up your industry as well. So go to Google Trends and look up what's happening in that industry. When you look at your customers, um, you know, what is the customer lifetime value? So when that just means like, what's the average cost of a customer that stays with you? So if I use the example of the Ajax Board of Trade, when you join, you pay a membership. Generally, if you stay for five to 10 years, that's a membership fee times those years. And then if you also spend three, $400 a year on, on memberships and sponsorships, or maybe it's 500, maybe it's more, this is how you come to that customer lifetime value. So if you're in business now already, you might actually have some of an idea of what a customer lifetime value is with you based on what they spent. And so here is their opportunities as you move online to cross sell other products and services to upsell, maybe to put people into a membership or a subscription and offer high value. Um, you know, can you look at your price points? And then also, is there a niche that you can find? So when I talked about this catering business, the niche that she found was those single servings, you know, that parents and, uh, and, you know, children of older parents could buy single serving foods. And then is there product demand and opportunity, right? And so this lists Amazon sales and competition. So you can look up on Amazon actually quite in depth at how things are selling. And then you can look at Google search volume you can look at SEO ranking and SEO. So SEO stands for search engine optimization difficulty. So you can have a look. There are quite a few free websites that give you that information already. Google Trends is probably a great place to start. So looking at the different e-commerce platforms we have, um, the biggest and most well-known, as I've mentioned earlier, is Shopify. And uh, it is an end-to-end -end solution. It has everything in it from the very beginning of a small business that has point of sale in it, has the payment in it, has shipping, it's all inside and it has inventory management as well. <clears throat> so it is a very robust platform. In fact, companies like Tesla use it, you know, uh, and it's a great platform for, for that, but it is, it, and it all can also be really complicated because you can, um, you can actually uh, change your theme the way that you want it, you can, add a lot to it. So it certainly is a very robust program. I would say on the right, we have Squarespace and Wix, and that would be um, for a lot of businesses that are just getting into uh, e-commerce, and both of those work really well, and the price points for joining are also much less. WooCommerce, as I mentioned earlier, that's really well known. It's for WordPress, and uh, is it, I think 200 million websites use it. And then underneath that is big commerce, but big commerce really means big um, Shopify or big e-commerce platforms like Magenta. Um, there's a lot of others that are really big and built into other ERP systems. So um, that's why I mentioned those. And, you know, that's a different solution to really what we're talking about today. So when you... So going back to the setting up of your store, you can choose a theme. And here I've uh, put a theme of a Shopify website. You want your theme to really match your branding, your font and your colors and the layout and the style of how you present and how you talk to your customers. You don't want it to look like something totally not fitting in and not aligning with your brand. And so here you can see um, the aesthetic of what this person has chosen. It says creative workshops, and I think the images actually talk to that as well. So there are different themes that are free as well as paid, just like in a website. Excuse me, I just need to take a drink of water.
So different themes that you can certainly look at for your website. So choosing a theme would be one of the next biggest uh, ide kind of like steps that you need to take once you've figured out your domain. And then the most important step is the content and the necessary content so that it would be optimized for people who come to your website and also for the search engines to pick it up, right? Um, I help a lot of customers with getting their content ready. Um, many businesses just go straight to the web designer before they've even thought about what's all the content, right? And then they're like, my website's delayed, it's taking so long, and they wanna blame the web developer, but really it's up to us to actually get that content ready for our web developer to be able to um, you know, fill out all the information on the website. And when you put your content together, you know, especially because it's a product that's on a page, it's two dimensional. You really need to build out that content and, the, and, and optimize it, the wording and the way that you write and the, and the product descriptions and service descriptions of what you're gonna do. Um, some great ideas of learning about content. Um, there's a book called Copywriting Secrets that you can buy. You, I think you get the book for free, but you have to pay for shipping. I don't know if any of you have heard of click funnels or lead pages or landing pages. Um, there's a great learning by looking at some of those websites as to how content is positioned for customers to buy. Um, there's lots of websites where you literally scroll down the page as they sell to you all the way down and convince you, you know, to click on that button to buy. And point of sale is also a really important thing. So right when you're putting together your business, there's different ways of point of sale and point of sale is an, like different ones, but they're all in one. They can be cloud based. Um, there's systems that are in the store, but you can also have one that's connected to Shopify or connected to any of your e-commerce engines. Um, here's three that I know of um, that I use and have recommended to customers. I think Lightspeed is probably one of the best for you to put your catalog into. Um, so definitely worth checking that out as well. And then payment, so figuring out who your payment processor is going to be. I know that Shopify uses Square. Um, but you can also put PayPal or Stripe or Apple Pay or TD Merchant Services or Chase Payment Tech. All of those can be actually bookended into your system as well. You know, when you choose a payment provider, just consider where your business is, who your customers are, how much sales are going to go through it. Um, and think about those because for some businesses, PayPal works just wonderfully and for others, there's too much volume going through. And so then it ends up maybe being a solution where you could actually use the Ajax Picking Board of Trade, in fact, has uh, really good merchant rates as well. So maybe that's a solution for your business as well. Next to consider is shipping. So uh, today we have some other options, right? In this pandemic time, um, shipping is certainly an option where you ship it out and then pick up and then contactless delivery is another option as well. So maybe those are things that you have to discover to um, discern for your business. When you look at shipping as well, I know with Shopify, you can, it's all built right into it. They actually have Canada Post and the United States Postal Service um, plugged right into the website. You can also use this other solutions like Freightcom. I know that the Chamber of Commerce has Freightcom as a solution in Durham region. We have Chit Chat to Express which gets parcels across the border for five bucks or something like that and uh, across Canada. So, um, you know, there's a lot of different options for sure. Also, um, there, there is statistics around businesses who offer free shipping. Even if you say $50 in free shipping, um, people often spend to that level to get to the free shipping, even though the cost of getting to $50 is probably the cost of the shipping anyway. And um, people always like to go for free shipping. So consider that as a business, you know, that is a strategy you might need for your business is to like, what level do you need customers to buy at so that you can offer free shipping? So yeah, that's just what I meant. So it's one of the best ways to reduce copying, uh, shopping cart abandonment. And also even on the Shopify platform, there's a whole bunch of apps that you can add and even on WooCommerce that you can add so that if your customer leaves things in the shopping cart, 
you can email them back and say, hey, you forgot some information or you, you forgot some tool or some, some products in your shopping cart. I'm sure some of you have had that happen to you. Um, um, I actually sometimes do waste a bit of time shopping, shopping, looking, and they're not buying, but I've put them all in my cart. Then I get that email. Sometimes people even email you and say, look, if you check out now, you'll get a 10% discount. So uh, they, they have those apps that you can connect to really um, grow that customer engagement for you. So some of your home page best practices, I think you probably know about this, but in a e-commerce website, the search bar is really important. So if you look at this picture on the right, there's a little circle right next to the door there where my arrow is. That is the search bar. You want an obvious call to action. You really need to put in, what do you want your customers to do when they come to your website? So when we're looking at this picture on the right, it's saying right here, take a look into the world of interior designer and stylist Brady Tolbert. It's actually telling you what to do. So that's the obvious call to action. The value proposition here is that his uh, interior designer and, and a stylist. Um, it probably has more of a better value proposition further into the website. Um, I can see that they have a product tab across the top, so it's easier. And then on the footer, you will have all the information about your company and signing up to your newsletter and other products and services and your catalog and perhaps a job opportunity section. I'm sure many of us have seen those on websites for sure. So these are really some really good best practices that you can use as a business to start and to grow your e-commerce store. So here we're looking at Smart Suites. I don't know if you guys know they're a Canadian company as well. Um, here, right on the left is their value proposition. It says, kick sugar, keep candy. So delicious candy you can feel good with because it has less sugar. There's only three carbs in each package. So um, a great success story. Uh, started out in Toronto, their Toronto business. They actually went through um, the Startup Company Plus program with Enterprise Toronto and have moved and actually sell all over now. So you can see at the top, they tell you you can shop, you can build a box, where are the stores you could go to. And I know that they sell through like Bulk Barn and Healthy Planet and, and those kinds of stores. And it talks about them. It has FAQs, it has a search bar on the right, it has a shopping card, it tells you, you know, the little person on the right is your account. So very clear and well laid out how the products look. They even can see what the products look like right on the front page. Even down on the bottom on the left here, it's shop now. And it's giving, telling, this is the call to action for customers. So then we look at your product pages. I think we mentioned the, this a little bit earlier, but display your shipping information clearly. Have high quality images. And this is where, you know, we can move into some product photography. And we can also look at like, where can you get images from for the products you use. Say you have digital products, right? Perhaps Canva is a great place to use to make your images. Um, customer reviews are really important. So if you have customer reviews for the products and services you're selling, add them to the product pages. Very important product description, price and features. If any of you are thinking of even selling on Amazon, there's a lot of Amazon Facebook groups. There's Shopify Facebook groups, WooCommerce, there's uh, e-commerce Facebook groups. I think Joining some of those would really help to teach you a little bit about this. There is definitely buyer psychology involved in product descriptions on how you write your features. I think if any of you have been through the experience of even shopping online or buying on Amazon, you can tell from the product description, from the price, from the features, from the customer reviews, from the pictures, you can tell why you buy from one and not from the other, right? So you wanna put yourself forward to the best that you can. And again, a call to action for each product is really important. So here's Harry's. Um, they shop, they ship free in the US when orders are over $10. It is available in US and Canada, but you know, the Canadian, uh, shopping and uh, post is quite different. But here you can see that you can buy a, a whole shaving kit. This first picture actually shows you what comes in the winter Winston set. The second picture goes into what in a, a quite more detail what the actual razor looks like. And then the third set 
photo actually shows you what the setup looks like. You know, what, what's the experience or what's the unboxing that you're going to get? When you look up at the top, you can see gifts, products, you can see shave plans, you can see about Harry's. And then on the right, you can see that you can sign in and there's a shopping cart, right? So very clear across the top about the product. And then as you go onto the right side, it actually shows what the product is. It says foaming gel, foams up, cushions face, and the shave cream. Smooth, easy glide. You can choose different coloring and you can also choose engraving. So um, a lot of detail here. And then it also says quality guaranteed, learn more. So it's actually telling you right here that they are guaranteeing their products. And what do you want to learn about that? So um, they've laid this out in a really cool, uh, modern look. You can see that this is appealing to men. And uh, you can see that that is in the brand and in the way that they lay out their products and services. Sage, also US and Canada, I believe. So this is uh, essential products. And when you look down on the bottom here, if you're going to buy the Sage product, and here we've picked immune, um, you can see a diffuser and, you, and they, they um, merchandise it with the diffuser and also with some other things like, you know, some greenery, maybe that's lavender, so that you can almost walk into what that experience would smell like, right? And on the right on the bottom, it actually tells you what it is, fresh, revitalizing, and clearing. That's their value proposition of this product. It relieves symptoms of flu and colds. You know, it actually tells you what it is. It tells you down there how to use it, what are the ingredients, what's the shipping and returns. On the top, it says, what are the reviews? Um, it gives you even an opportunity to have recurring purchases. So um, I think you've even seen that on Amazon now that you can save money if you buy a product to arrive every month. And, um, you know, those are options that certainly you have for your business as well. So when we look at the checkout page, I don't know about you. Um, have you had any bad experiences when it comes to checking out? I know for me, the, the more people have to fill out, the less opportunity they're going to click that shop box. Um, allow guest checkout. Um, I don't like it sometimes when websites make me have to fill out a whole a pro profile with username and password when I don't even know if I'm ever going to go back. Um, don't ask for you know, unnecessary information that you don't need. Offer multiple payment methods. So I know, um, you know it's one thing to offer Visa and MasterCard, but maybe PayPal so that people can pay off their bank account. Maybe Stripe. Um, there's a lot of different options. Apple Pay as well, right? Offer an opportunity to preview the order and then confirmation of the completed sale is really important in their cart so that people see what there is in the cart. So when you, this, excuse me, one second. I have my heater on, so it's getting a little hot. When you get to the checkout page, um, this is a great checkout page actually, because it really has a lot of detail on it. Here, it shows you, you know, review your order, where are you shipping to, the types of shipping you can do. You want to check out quickly with PayPal. Um, it shows you just a bit of the details that they need. And then on the right hand side, again, it says either credit card or PayPal, um, which is such a great option for sure. And then I like this. I'm keen for new releases and subscriber exclusives, right? Sign me up. Always have an opportunity for your customers to join your newsletter. Um, when they're on your newsletter or you have their email address, it's gold because you can still uh, communicate with them. Um, sometimes the challenge of uh, having a Facebook store is that the customers come through Facebook and you don't actually have that much access to them. If you should get stuck into uh, Facebook jail, um, you can't access your customers. So uh, best practice is to generally make sure that the email addresses are something that come to you. So. If you have people joining your groups on Facebook, always think to ask the question, can I have your email address so that you gather that information on your customers. So one of the next important things, whether you're going on e-commerce or not, is to really get into who your buyers are. And that means to really understand what is the persona of your buyer? Who are they? Um, it's somewhat fictional, but like for BACD, our buyer personas are startup businesses and existing businesses. And we base that on the research of the data that we get about our customers. And so same for you. What do you know about your, your customers 
do you understand their behaviors and their motivations and their goals and the pains that they might have as to why they are looking for your kind of solution? Do you know what platforms they're on and what their demographics are? And the reason you want to know that is so that then you know how to market and where to market, right? It's the point of go fish with the fish are. And so um, many, many businesses unfortunately look at wasting money in places where their customers are not. So um, really getting clear about who your customer persona is. And I have a great template that I'm going to send out to Andrew after this so that you have access to it. And I'll just show you that template. There's a customer persona template. Um, so getting a better understanding of our customer is really good for us because then we can communicate products and services that they may need, right? And here, it actually lays it out. Um, what type of persona is it? Is it a user, a buyer, an initiator, an influencer, or a decider? Uh, when we look at the per person themselves, what are they thinking? What are the ideas that they have and opinions, you know? Um, today's the customers are becoming really discerning, very educated. Um, they know exactly what they're looking for or where to search for it. Um, what are your customers feeling? What are their preferences? You know, what do they do in their lives? What projects or responsibilities or activities do they care about? Um, where are they going? You know, what is it that they are looking for in terms of opportunity? And so really getting into understanding what your customer wants is helping you to provide the right products and services. Um, this is a, another way to find out about your buyer personas. And this is actually from my website, I think today. Um, and this talks to like where our clients are going. And so if I'm going to be finding out about my buyer personas is I'm going to be using this as an idea of like, if I'm launching programs and services, I might be sticking with some of these high level categories. And then they go down further in, right? Of course, if there's a number of click-throughs, this is how they end there. So have a look at your Google Analytics and, and see where this is for you and for your business and which pages customers visit. Because then you get, again, a clue of who the people are and where they're going and what is important. And also have a look. So here it tells you how many people are going. So this is our top website. And then the events is our, our next biggest. And then COVID planning is another one and then business courses and then sales so obviously some of these are talking to like what are the top pain points of our customers right they're looking at events they're looking at business uh, planning for COVID-19 they're looking at courses to learn they're looking at sales right these are some of the issues that they have so this is great for you to do as well for your business right so then you can present solutions that align with where your customers are going um, so look at this for your business to make that decision as well. Um, know about your buyer's journey. And that's probably what that other slide also talked to is like, what is the journey your customer is taking and where are they ending up? So if you look here on the right side, you can see that they're coming from the BACD landing page, then they're going to events, then they're going to a lot more detail. And I can, of course, drill down much further into this, but for today's presentation, I certainly didn't want to bore you with all those details. Um, so when you look at your buyer, one of the things you're trying to first do when you're in e-commerce, but even now as a business, is that you are trying to get them aware of your products and services. And so their first stage about finding you is, is where they are trying to solve their problems. They're looking for either education or they're looking for answers, right? And so when a company, when somebody then finds that they start to evaluate you, whether your product or service is a good fit for you, for them, sorry, and then they decide to make a purchase. Um, so having these, like having, and if you looked at that slide, that I had the Google Analytics on is the customers are coming from awareness into evaluation into decision. So they're coming through that marketing funnel, right? And so when you think of your buyer's journey is do you know the journey that they take to reach the point where they make a, uh, make a purchase decision? So I have a great slide on that to go into a little bit more detail. One of my favorite slides and I'll tell you why, because it actually has a, a lot of information on one slide. If we look at the bottom left, it says discover, consider, purchase, adopt, and advocate. And this is where we want to take our customers through, right? 
because we want to take them through that journey that they advocate and say, I love the Ajax Boda trade. You should join with me, right? And now they're an advocate. And at the top, it's the buyer's journey, moving them from strangers to advocates is really the point. And so these are different touch points that you can have with your customer in a digital environment, right? So it starts on the left. Now, maybe for my business and your business, we're not using radio and TV and print and outdoor at this point, but we're using word of mouth. And word of mouth, we're probably using social um, and friends, right? And then online, definitely, there might be online and search content and emails and paid content. So we're moving from that awareness piece into where our customers move into considering our products and services. So they look at things like websites, landing pages, third-party websites, direct mail. Um, so I'm using this slide as a, an example of like all the, all the touch points, all the um, communications that you can, and offers that you can have with a client, right? And now if you look at the physical touch points are listed here on the bottom in the green store branch agent broker. And if you look up north, it's the digital touch points, right? Which is probably where we're gonna be for a little while, which is uh, mobile apps, sites, webs, the website, if there's self-service, um, the community, uh, chat icons on your website, any social places that people could interact with you, or even if you do have you know, a call center where people can buy. And then when we move from that, they move into buying. So that's the invoice, um, surveys, loyalty programs, emails, that kind of thing. So these touch points is what keeps your customer in touch with you. And you do that by moving them through this journey. And so one of the things I did at BACD when I joined was looking at what was my customer journey and where would we need to be to help them meet those needs that they have? What services would we need where and what options? And then on top of that, I then mapped our business processes so that we could automate some of those processes. And so this might be a place for you to think about that opportunity is automating some of the processes in your business. And, uh, if you need help with that, we certainly love to walk people through solving those problems. Um, I like what Jeff Bezos says. Um, you know, people like to hate on Amazon because of what they are, and, and I get it, but the reason he's gotten to where he's gotten to is that the offering has not been in our market to, that is so slick compared to theirs. So here's an opportunity for us to thrive in spite of Amazon, because the more our local marketplaces and businesses do well, the better off everybody is, right? But anyway, he says, customers are invited guests to a party and they're the hosts. And it's their job every day to make every important aspect of the customer experience a little better. And you have to be honest that Amazon has got that nailed down in many ways. They reduce the friction for customers. They make it easy to return products. They make it easy to get refunded. They make it easy to find the products, right? And even on Amazon, if you list your products on Amazon, they've given you a way as a business to have a marketplace to promote your products and services. So what are your next steps? So research and compare different e-commerce platforms. And as I said, I'd be happy to help walk through this with you. Um, decide which products you want to start selling, whether it be digital products or even physical products. Create content for each page you know, of your website. Get high quality photos of your products. And today, even if you Google it and find it on YouTube, you could probably figure out a way to take your own product photography. Map out a shipping strategy that works best for you. Then once you've done that, you're ready to create a marketing strategy of the markets you're going to go to. And then it's launch day. So those are really the next steps to putting e-commerce into play for you. So finally, I just wanna wrap up by saying thank you very much for giving me your time and attention today. I didn't see any questions in the chat box, but if you do have any, I would love to answer those for you. And otherwise, please reach out to us. We're all working virtually and uh, we run probably 20 to 30 webinars a month just around business topics. And uh, some cost money and some don't. And, you know, I appreciate your support. And yes, Brian, the slideshow will be available. I will make that available to Audra. And also you will, I think the recording goes on their website, correct, Andra? Yes, it does. 
under our COVID page. If you go to our homepage, you'll see the big COVID sign. You click there, all of our recordings are available there. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know if anybody has any questions. I'd be happy to listen in and hear. Hi, Teresa. You mentioned the cross border pickup company. Yes. So there's a different. Go ahead. Different ones. Are you shopping for your business in the US and then looking to get that across to the Canada? Yes. Okay. So there's actually a company called crossborderpickups.ca. I know that one. Yes. You know, I think you mentioned Chit Chat or Chat Express. So that's another one. But I think that's more for businesses shipping. But go and have a look at that one. So because there's a cross border pickups is more for like consumers or businesses that are shopping a lot in the US and then needing their products brought over to this way. Okay. Yep. I've used cross border in the past. <laughs> yes, they're probably okay. one of the best, honestly. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. This was Thank great. You. Um, I think I'll personally be reaching out to you. Okay. Um, just in terms of having the flow of what I need to do, but getting some help to put the pieces together. Yeah, absolutely. That's what we help with, like making sense of those kinds of things, solving some problems. Maybe there's some apps and software we need to connect as well. So we, we, we help with a lot of those kinds of things. Yeah. And, you know, we also want to put your Google My Business presence together and some directories and your pages on your social, because even, even if you don't get to the point that you have an e-commerce website, there's all those marketplaces, right? Amazon, Etsy, a lot of our clients actually sell on those as well, because it's a, it's a marketplace. It's in there's local marketplaces, right? There's the Makers Hub, there's Markets by Dream Day, that's another mar local marketplaces that have switched and pivoted to online business. So um, there's Durham Region Online.ca, I think is another local marketplace. So there's lots of those popping up at this time as well. So being on them is really important. Um, you mentioned the customer journey and yes. you know, the whole shebang of, of from beginning to end. Um, for BABC, do you do that in-house or you outsource it? What, work, work, walk through your customer journey with you? No, in terms of how, how you do for your company. Yes, we do it in-house. We do it in-house, okay. Yeah. Um, uh, is it perfect? No. But we edit and fix and add yeah. software and take away pieces and automate certain processes. So we, uh, we've built that inside, yeah. Okay. There's always the struggle of, do I hire someone to do this? Do I outsource it? Or do I try to do it myself? It depends what, and I'd be happy to walk through that with you because certainly I suggest outsourcing a lot of things if it's not in your bailiwick, you know, if it's not in your toolbox, outsource it if you can afford to, but if you can't, perhaps the first place to start is by yourself and then slowly figure out what pieces you can outsource, right? Okay. Thank you, Pauline. Don't know if anybody else has any questions, we're happy to answer them. Okay. Thank you very much, Teresa. Fascinating session. I am. I have some ideas and stuff I'd like to chat with you about uh, later on. But uh, wonderful session. Thank you very much for presenting it for us. My uh, pleasure. As you all have heard, BACD offers a lot of opportunity. I encourage you, if you have not done so at this point, to visit their website. Take a look at what they do. Um, a great tool for any business. Uh, for for our other sessions, just wanted you to be aware. Tomorrow we have our Digital Communications Masterclass Part 2. Uh, you don't have to have taken Part 1 to participate in Part 2 and Part 3. We encourage all of our members or, or anyone actually to participate if you have a business uh, to understand how to uh, communicate, use digital to communicate what you, what you offer. On May 19th, we have Post-Crisis Behavioral Intelligence for Transitioning Back to Work. Uh, as we begin to open up, it's, a great, uh, it's great for everyone to understand, uh, not just the fears, but the opportunities available for business. On May 20th is Digital Communications Masterclass Part 3. And on May 28th, we have Excel Tips and Tricks, Upgrading Skills While Working from Home. So um, I think everybody can use a bit of Excel training. So uh, we encourage you to join us for all of these events. They're all free. Uh, share it with your friends, uh, register, and network. So thank you all again for attending.
Thank you, Teresa. Fantastic. And if you, any one of you need us for anything, please reach out. We're here for you. Thank Have you. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Excellent. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye.